I know, I know, I know what you're thinking. Neo, really? Really? You hate Bad Max Fury Road? You think it's rubbish? Compared to everybody else who thinks it's amazing and Rotten Tomatoes has given it 98% and a few of the most critically acclaimed reviews of the world have given it glowing reviews, five stars this, oh, it's a great film this, and all oh, this other MacGuffin, we love it, we love it, it's amazing. And then the feminist groups are like, yes, we actually like it too, because it has strong female characters and stuff. How can you not like a film that everyone else likes? Blasphemy! Doesn't matter, don't care. I hate this film, I hate it with a passion, and... I love the first three Mad Max films. I love Mad Max 1. I love Mad Max Road Warrior. And I even like Beyond Thunderdome. Okay, in my eyes it's the weakest, but then after seeing this one, Fury Road, it's certainly a lot better than that one. <sighs> no, I, I, I saw it last night. And I was really looking forward to it. I thought, oh, God, this is supposed to be really good. I've heard so many good things. I didn't know anything about the plot or anything. I hadn't spoiled it for myself. I just thought, no, all I know is everyone loves it. And uh, when most people tend to love a film, it tends to be good on its own. Can't wait. It apparently goes back to the old films and all that stuff because not many people like the third one, as you know. Some people do, of course, but people didn't like it because it was a bit stretched with the whole kids bit, sort of two thirds of the way through the film, and it goes on for a bit too long. Well, no, halfway through the film, I should say, and then it goes on for a bit too long. Yeah, I get that. Whereas the first two films are a bit tighter and more action packed and what have you. They're like, no, no, it doesn't do Beyond Thunderdome. It does the first two films and it's amazing. But. But it's not. It was awful. It was it was it was rubbish. And I'll tell you why it was rubbish. The reason why it was rubbish was because it wasn't a Mad Max film. It wasn't Mad Max. It was a completely different film. Well, OK, it wasn't a completely different film. I mean, to be fair to it, it had elements of a Mad Max film. But that was its biggest problem. It was not a Mad Max film. It, Mad Max was hardly even in it at all. I mean, yes, he was in it. I mean, you saw him and all that, but he didn't have any presence. He wasn't the main character of the film. No, 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 no. Let's just push him aside for this other character, this this female character who's strong, and, 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 and Max has to support her instead of him being the strong character who saves everyone. No, no, no. Let's modernize it and let's get a strong female character who's the main focus of the film. I'm like, okay, great, no problem. I have no problem with a strong female character who can stand up on her own and even command men to do things for her, you know, in a real-life situation, as opposed to her being the the typical, stereotypical damsel in distress female character. I've got no problem with that whatsoever. But she's not the main character, because the film isn't called her name, which I think was Furioso, if I can remember correctly. It's not called Mad Furioso, or Mad Max is Furiosa's lapdog or anything. No, it's called Mad Max Fury Road. The main character of the film is Mad Max. But he wasn't the main character, it was her. So really, the first thing I would do to change this film, to make it good, is don't call it Mad Max. Call it Furiosa, or Mad Furiosa, or whatever. Think of this film as a spiritual sequel, or spiritual successor, I should say, to Mad Max instead, and have her as the main character. Because that was the other problem with this film. Not only was it not a Mad Max film... There was no main character, really, at all. I mean, I, I know I just said she was, but she was the closest they had to a main character. I mean, the film didn't really know who was the main character. There wasn't one, really. And you may think, well, was that a big deal? It, it, yes, especially if you call it after a character and they're not the main character of the film. Yes, yes it is, because who do you know who to follow? Who do you know who's the protagonist? Who are we meant to see what's going on through whose eyes, if you know what I mean? I mean, of course, with the audience, we'll see things a little bit differently from the main character, but you also see it through the main character's eyes for you to go, hmm, I agree, or hmm, I disagree, or hmm, I can understand his or her problems with the whole situation. Hmm, yes, God, this is a good film. I like this or dislike this protagonist, that kind of thing. It wasn't there, and it really meant the film didn't have much focus. Now, okay, okay. I hear you all saying, it's a Mad Max film. Do they have focus? Really? Have you watched the first two recently, especially? Did they have a focus? Really? You know, it's Mad Max, very little story, lots of action going on. Did it really have a focus to begin with? Yes! Yes, they did! And it was this. In the first film, he's the law-abider person. It wasn't strictly a cop, but he was someone who went around and helped with the local law service in the area he was in, you know, trying to defend the law, what was left of it. Anyway, he had a family, and he looked after his family, and then he was thinking about giving up on the law because he wanted to retire because his wife was getting a bit all 
you know, upset with him and she had his baby and all that MacGuffin. And he's like, yeah, I should give it up or not. I don't know. And then something happens and he's like, yes, I quit. That's it. I've had enough. I'm going to run away with the family and go somewhere nice. And they want him back. And then, you know, he goes away and they have a nice time. And then the bad guy who's really cool because he's got a great name and he's actually a really bad guy because you have time spent on the bad guy and you watch him do things. This is the first film, by the way. And you're like, ooh, that's a nasty bad guy. That's a nasty bad guy. Ooh, we don't like him, but ooh, he's scary as well. Ooh, ooh, he's a mean bad guy. I hope Max beats him up or kills or whatever because you have time to relate to the bad guy you actually spend time with him doing things on his own with his group and what have you and then the thing happens where he loses his family and he's all upset and distraught and it's tragic the way it happens i mean it's gruesome it's downright horrifying but you know it really packs a punch in the film and then he goes all mad he's like right that's it i've had enough but he doesn't say it he just see it he doesn't have to say anything it's all in body language and he just goes back to where he works just grabs some kit without anybody asking gets that awesome interceptor car with the amazing engine and just goes out on revenge and that's it and then after that he's on his own doing whatever he does best because he's mad he's had it he's lost it he's lost his grip on sanity which was being questioned in the film that was the first one. That was the focus about Mad Max. He was the focus. His development of his character was the focus. In the second film, his focus was he's you know been around for a while and he's got a car. Well, he's still got his car and he's also got a dog as well. And he's after gas because gas is in short supply. He needs it for his car to keep going. And then he's trying to find gas by, you know, stopping by things that have happened, you know, broken down cars or some incident that's happened with other people having a bit of a fight or whatever. He's collecting scraps of gas and then he gets involved with a few things and then he, he finds something that's interesting and he gets pinned down by the helicopter stroke plane pilot guy and then he gets the better of him but then Max turns it around and then the guy's like, no, don't kill me. I know somewhere where you can get all the gas in the world. It's amazing and he shows him where it is although Max drags him with him really to where it is and and the main focus of the film is he wants the gas and he sees the place that has the gas and he's like, great, I'll go there. I'll get as much gas as I want. If that's And that's his, that's his motivation even throughout the whole film. He's like, unlimited gas? Loads of it? You're insane. That's what he says. He has very few lines in the film but that's what he says. But he's still a a main character because the film follows him and when he does get in with the good guys who want to take over the place with all the gas because it's got been taken over by the bad guys they're just burning it and doing their own thing and the good guys have sort of they're dying they're running out of supplies they need it they need the gas to be able to make it productive make it you know close to civilization basically close to a sort of, sort of developing society so they can use it for their own ends and what have you uh you know and Mac, you know they they somehow find max i can't remember i haven't watched the second film for a while actually but i know that they find him in his car and they're like, right, well, you know, you help us out. We'll give you gas for your car. If not, we're keeping the car. You know, he's got motivation. He wants his car back. He wants gas. So he helps them out. That's it. And in the film, towards the end of the second one, where, you know, they've got their plan and it goes to pop because the bad guys attack him and knock out a few of them and kills the leader or what have you. Well, he's injures him enough anyway. Man Rack's like, you want to solve this problem? You come to me. I got a plan. And he takes over because that's what he does. And he does the thing because he's the main guy. He's not just saving their butts. He's helping them out. He's the main character of the film. And everything's great. And it ends brilliantly. And they survive and Max goes his own way. Then even in the third film, again, he's the main character. He does his thing. He goes to Barter Town. He meets Tina Turner. Again, you spend time with the bad guys. And in the second one, you spend a bit of time with the bad guys. You get to know them a little bit and all that. Not as much as in the first or the third film, but enough for you to go, ooh, I hate them. I hate them. They're bad guys. Ooh, I hope they get defeated. But they've also got personality and character where they're like, gosh, they're mad and scary and all that you know in the third that's the second film and then in the third film you know he beats Teen Turner and all that and he gets to go to Barter Town and Barter Town's quite cool I like Barter Town and all the people in it and all that again you get to know the characters you spend time with them not too much obviously but enough for you to get to know them and, and relate to them and all that and then he does his thing and then he gets thrown into the Thunderdome and has that awesome fight which is amazing and then you know and then he, he gets cast out into the desert to die with the wheel and then he meets the kids and okay the kids bit is a bit meh. but it, it's still all right it's just a bit drawn out but then he goes back and he saves them and then he lets them go it, he's the main character of the film do you see what I'm getting at? Whereas in this film, he's like, all right, well, I'm at the beginning. I am looking over a desert with my car, which I've somehow got back because I kind of lost it in the second film. But this film doesn't strictly follow the third one. But whatever. My name is Max and I'm going to narrate my background and my history a little bit. And then and then I'm going to get my car and drive off. And then I'm going to get ambushed and my car's going to get flipped over. And you're like, what? No. Hey, Max does not talk nearly as much as he does in this film i know with this film it's been 20 years since the third one and i guess maybe the director george miller was like mm, there's going to be people here who 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 uh you know are going to see this film and not have seen the other three i need to add a bit of background narration to put max together as a character 
That's fine, but you didn't have to spend nearly as much time as he did with the character narrating his dark, gravelly voice. It doesn't really match the original Max's. I mean, I know it's a different actor playing Max. That's fine, but I didn't think he was that good, to be honest with you. Except when he gets in the truck for the first time with Furiosa and he's getting all the guns and all that. And he's looking really panicky and, and all that. That, was good. that bit was good. That was a Mad Max moment. That was pretty good. Um, but, uh, you know, he's doing the narration thing and he keeps having these flashbacks with his kid. And I'm like, wait, is that his kid? Who's that? Who's this? What are these flashbacks all about? Why does he keep hallucinating this child everywhere? And I'm like, wait, wait a minute, that's his kid? But his kid was a baby in the other film. What the hell? It made no sense. And even though, again, like I said, oh, maybe they put that in to, to try and get people who are new to the franchise to just get a bit of background on Max, you know, to get him up to speed or just at least, you know, if it was a reboot. I don't even know if this film was a reboot or not. If it was, it failed. But, you know, you know, oh, we'll put some background to him so people can relate to it and all that. It didn't go anywhere. It was unnecessary. It was just there as a plot device to get him to fail, to get captured by the guys, to be used as the thing which was quite gruesome that was the other good thing about this film there there were a couple of good things like i said there were some elements of the film that were mad max like i said the action scenes were pretty good uh, i like the lack of um cgi for the action scenes that was fantastic the cars and the vehicles were pretty cool for the most part um and uh yeah the chases were good and all that they were intense they were well shot and all that although sometimes even the editing i was like i can't understand what the hell's going on here what is going on i don't get it uh hmm who do i care for wait what's going on who's that guy wait what who what <laughs> I don't know. That was the other problem with it. Um, but uh, oh, I've lost my train of thought now because I got confused with all the action. Now, what was I saying? Oh, no, I've lost it. I've lost it. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I like the bit with um, the beginning where he gets captured. Okay, he gets captured. He loses the car, but okay, big deal. No, it is a big deal. He has to have his car. Again, I know it's not in the third film, but no, Mad Max car. Trust me, it works. Just watch the first two films again and you'll be like, oh, yeah, Mad Max needs his car. Um, but anyway, no, I like the fact that he gets captured and then he gets used as a as a as a blood donor, basically. I liked that idea because I thought, yes, it's post apocalyptic. It's after the nuclear wars happened. That's a crazy thing that can happen. That's great. Um, I liked it. It was gruesome, and I felt sick watching it because I hate the whole idea of blood transfusions and blood loss. It's one of my weakest flaws as a person and an individual. And I'm, I, you know, as much as I hate to admit it, I'm also honest about it. Massive pussy about it. It made me sick to the stomach. You don't see a lot of it though. To its to the film's credit, it didn't make a big fuss over it that much. You just saw the tube connected with Max and the guy he was donating blood to. You only saw it. It was, it was briefly mentioned, and that was it. And he, when he was getting his back tattooed, it had ultra octane blood type O, whatever. It was a good idea. It was a good idea. As much as I didn't like it in terms of me making me feel sick, um, I liked the idea. So the idea was okay. Um, but I like that. And but. Again, it was the bad guys as well. At the very beginning, when they're setting up the bad guys as this weird anemic race of white people, and they've all got illnesses and stuff, and you know they they keep women to breed with and make breast milk, and somehow they have this area that actually has greenery in it. So they have vegetables, and they've got water, but the people in charge of it control the water, so the people who are working for them don't get very much water. And there's this big show with the main bad guy, and he's he's got the suit on to make him look beefy, even though he's quite ill. And then he releases the water and the people are like, Oh, water. Great. And then he turns it off to keep him addicted to it. And he says, don't be addicted to water, which is stupid. Cause how can you be addicted to water? I mean, mm. um, and, uh, it was an interesting setup, but it was so rushed that although you saw flashes of it, you didn't have enough time to really get to know the bad guys at all. Not like in the other three films. It's just brushed over. So although the bad guys look the part, they look mad, they look menacing, and they look freaky, and you're like, blimey, they're scary just from appearances. That was it. You don't know what their motivation was. You don't really know much about them individually. Uh, you, and you could, you know, some people have argued, oh, well, it's a visual story. You know, it's not based on words. It's not based on reading. It's based on what you see. I'm like, yeah, I'm seeing all this stuff, but I want to know a bit more about this person. Not all everything, but enough for me to care. That was the biggest issue. Okay, not a Mad Max film. Mad Max wasn't the main character. It was Furiosa. Again, nothing wrong with a strong female character, but um, it should have been called Furiosa. It should have just followed her. And she should have been the main character. And just have Mad Max in it as a cameo thing. Or Mad Max as a support character. And go, oh, it's Mad Max. Oh, oh is this like a spiritual... That would have been a bit better. But whatever. Um, but, the, yeah, the bad guys... You just didn't get to know them. So I, I didn't care. For that most of the film, I didn't care what was going on. Because Max wasn't the main person. I'm not saying he has to be the main person who sells everything or saves everyone. I like the scenes where, you know, she's using Max's support. There's like a bit where he's trying to... They're, they're on this truck and this truck's got women and all kinds of stuff. And Furious is trying to save them because they were going to be destined for this trade to this other horrible place. And then she drives off road to take him to the, her green place. She calls it the green place. She's going to her homeland, which is amazing. 
and she's got all these women on it and stuff on this truck. I get that. That's that's fair enough. But it was it, you didn't care. That was the thing. You just introduced these people and you're like, okay. But no care. Um, and the only care you got was um, just that moral compass. You know, we are women who are distraught. We're very sexy, but we're being used for breeding purposes. We want to be free. Okay, fine. But you got a bit more than that. You know, three-dimensional characters, a bit more thoughts, feelings, ideas, beliefs. Just a little bit. Not too much, but a little bit for me to identify which ones I like, which ones I don't like. A little bit more than that, maybe? No? Okay, fair enough. Um, you know... It, you just didn't care. I didn't care throughout the whole film. I really didn't care. It's just why I'm struggling, really, to remember much of it, because I just didn't care. Again, the action was great, but pointless. I just didn't... I didn't know what was going on half the time. I was really trying. I was really watching the film, and I just didn't get it. I didn't care. I was like, who's this person? Right, who's that person? Oh, that was the guy he was attached to. The, wait, why is he a good guy now? Why are the bad guys really after them? They're just women. Oh, he was pregnant with... Wait, the one woman's pregnant with his kid. How did that woman have that man's... But, uh, that's just... Oh, the baby's... De- wait, what? <laughs> it, it was too pacey. Far too pacey. It was rushed through. And I didn't like that. It kind of felt like this film was trying to not be the third one. It was kind of as if George Miller, who directed the first three, along with his friend who sadly died in a helicopter crash, um, it was kind of like as if he was trying to say, right, I want to make a new Mad Max film. And I know it's been in development hell as well. That's another reason to say, oh, well, it's been in development hell for years. It can't be that perfect. I'm like, I don't care. I don't care if it's been in 10, 20 years of development. It should have been a good film. It should have been Mad Max. I don't care. I've seen the first three Mad Max films. I know what Mad Max is. It's got to be Mad Max. It's the main guy who created it along with his partner, who, again, who sadly died. But still, the main guy, George Miller, he knows what Mad Max is. How can you mess it up? He did. But, you know, it, it's kind of like... You know, like I said, it, it just didn't, it just was rubbish. <laughs> it really was. Again, that was the bit I forgot, and I just remembered. The bits where, um, yeah, there's a bit where they got the truck, and then the truck slows down. It slows down and breaks down a hell of a lot. It makes sense, but it's whatever. And there's a bit, it's like night time, and they get stuck, and there's more bad guys after them, and there's this tree, and then they have to use the tree to get the truck moving. I didn't quite understand that bit. But anyway, it worked, and then... Uh, they have, a, they have guns on them, but not much bullets. And then Max gets the, a rifle out and he starts shooting at the spotlights of one of this vehicle that's coming towards him. He's trying to knock out the light so it can... Because the light can see where they are. But if he knocks out the light of the vehicle, the vehicle can't see them anymore. And he fires like two shots and they've only got three shots and he misses. And then Furious is like, oh, give me the rifle. And then he bends down and he uses she uses him as a sort of tripod thing. You know, those little bits worked fine. They were fine. Like I said, I've got nothing wrong with strong female characters, but she... She was the main character, Furiosa. That was it. He wasn't. He he could have been taken out of the film and the film wouldn't have changed. He could have replaced Max with anybody and it would have been the same film. It really would have been. And a lot of the times Max did get some action when he was fighting or whatever. He was saved like all the time by women characters. The women that were with him and the women that they meet halfway through the film that they then take back with them back to the green place or whatever. The action scenes then, when he's trying to fight off the people when the cars are all after him and all that, he's saved by the women. The women are like, oh, Max is in trouble. Bang. Okay, Max, off you go. They don't really say that, but it's in their facial expressions. Um, or just, you know, instant fl- reflex. You know, they just notice Max in trouble and they shoot the person and he's all right again. He's saved all the time. And I'm like, dude, I get it. You're trying to get strong female characters across in this film to say, oh, we're trying to modernise films so that females aren't always the damsel in distress and all sexified. You know, oh, yes, these are these are strong, normal-looking women. Uh, normal-looking in that they all look like supermodels and they all look very attractive, but they're not sexy. But they're all very sexy-looking and possibly quite dim in real life. But, but they're not in this film. They're strong and they don't need men or anybody to help them. And yet Mad Max is with them because it's a Mad Max film and... He needs to help them, but he doesn't need to help them, really. He's just there as a support character. and, and It just didn't work. It didn't work. It's not a Mad Max film. This should have been a standalone film with Furiosa as the main character. Flesh her character out a little bit more. Not too much more. I'm not asking for Bible lengths of character development. I'm asking for just a few more minutes. And just call it Furiosa. And I would have preferred it then, because at least then I know who the main bloody character was. And then followed them, and it would have been all right, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it just wasn't, it really was it ended lamely as well. Really lamely. Really lamely. Like, they get back to the green land and then it turns out the main bad guy's dead. They kill him and it doesn't really matter. And then, and then 
they go back and he's like, oh, it's Furiosa who saved you. Yay, Furiosa! And, and then water's everywhere and everybody gets water. And then Max just wanders off in the audio, wanders off with the people and she looks around for him, finds him, and he's just like, yeah, I'm going now. And she's like, okay. And that's it, film over. And that makes sense, because he does. He doesn't stay around, he carries on. But in the other two films, at least the first two, uh, the second or third film, I should say, he gets abandoned abandoned like not abandoned on purpose or anything he sacrifices himself but as as they're going away to do their thing like in the second film they i think they're flying in the second film or was that the third film i forget or was it both they were flying i forget which film it is when they're flying away i think it's the third film yes you get in the plane and they're flying away um you know he gets off the plane to i don't know why he gets off the plane to, to save him but whatever it's a weight issue or something he gets off the plane and they fly off and they can't stop they can't stop to get him back because they've got the plane flying they have to go so they leave him. They have to. They've got no choice. But that's fine. Max is abandoned because he sacrifices himself in terms of, you know, not going with them. He wants to go with them. He, he's trying to go with them, but he can't. He has to get off because he does it because that's what he does. He saves the day. He says, all right, I'll get off. Or he just does it. And then he's abandoned that way and he just wanders the wasteland because it makes sense. In the second film, uh, he acts as the decoy in the truck at the end. He's the decoy. Like the, the truck doesn't have any real gas in it. It's a decoy. So while well, he acts as this decoy, everybody else went in the other direction and fled to their other places. That's right. They flee on buses or something like that. That's right. To their new place. But he's left because he was the decoy. He distracted the enemies. He took them out or he had some people with him that helped him take them out, of course. But they won. And then... Um, uh, that was it, but he was still the main focus because that was his plan to be a decoy to distract the enemies. And then when they were all defeated or found out that there was no, well, they weren't all defeated, but when they found out that the truck was a decoy, they couldn't go back and get him. He'd gone, but he'd been abandoned. That was the thing. But that made sense. In this film, he's like, oh, really abandoned? I, I, I go home with you. I'm there. I've made it to your Greenland. I've made it to your promised place, but I'm not going to stay. I'm off. No reason. <laughs> it's just, I'm just off. It's like, no, no, that's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. The whole film is wrong. It, it just is wrong. As an action film, though, on its own, it's pretty good. I mean, compared to modern action films today, it's certainly one of the better ones of the modern films. At least some of the editing isn't that bad. At least you can see stuff happening. It, to me, like I said, the action, I didn't care for the action that much because I didn't care who was really around and what was going on because I couldn't relate to the characters. But at least with the action, you could see things happening and some of the stuff was quite creative and it was mad. It was mad. At least they got the mad elements right. Sort of. But they got it. They got it. They got it right. And, you know, I'm like, yeah, OK, that's pretty cool and all that. So... And the action, again, no C there was very little CGI. There was some CGI in it, but the CGI that you did know, and it wasn't very good CGI, but it was only very little bits here and there. And again, the sandstorm bit, when they're in the sandstorm near the beginning of the film, that was the best bit of the film. That was that was good. Over the top, but it was good. Um, and again, I liked the whole blood thing. I thought that was an interesting start. Uh, but that, that's it. Like his character, when he's 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 attached to this blood donor guy on his car, you know, he gets he's donating blood to this guy. This guy wants to go with them to go and take out Furiosa because she suddenly runs away with her women and all that. And then they go after him. But this guy's like, no, I want to go with you. I want to go with you. And the other guy's like, no, you can't because you're, you're 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 weak. You need your blood transfusion. And he's like, I'll oh, take me take the blood thing with me. And Max is strapped to his car and he's donating blood to him as he's driving. And I'm like, yeah, that's insane. That's gruesome, but that's insane. That's pretty cool. That bit was fine. But then the that guy survives and then. Uh, becomes a good guy halfway through the film just from talking to a redhead girl. Redhead girl goes over and goes, you are not so bad, are you? And he's like, I don't understand. Because he confesses that he gas it. Yeah, he, 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 he tries to... Uh, his boss is like, if you do this thing for me and take up Furiosa with this gun with a bullet to her head, you will be granted access to Valhalla. And he sprays his mouth with car paint and what have you. And then he's like, yes, I'll do it. And then he fails miserably because he does. And then he's really upset and disappointed that he can't get to Valhalla and all that. But then this red girl's like, doesn't matter. It's okay. It's fine. And then he's suddenly a good guy. And you're like, what? What? <laughs> it just, no, it just, no, this wasn't a Mad Max film. That was his biggest crime. The biggest problem with this film is it wasn't a Mad Max film. It was a film with Mad Max in it, but even Mad Max didn't do very much. I didn't really like Tom Hardy as him either. I don't think Tom Hardy... It was Tom Hardy's fault, but he didn't make a very good Mad Max, really. You know, Not because I'm a Mel Gibson super obsessed fan or, like I said, you can't replace him with anybody but Mel Gibson. No, I'm open to a new actor playing as Mad Max. I mean, Christ, I love the Bond films and how many actors did we have playing Bond, you know. Um, so I'm open to that. And Doctor Who, of course, with the different actors of Doctor Who. Yes, it's explained, but still, you have different Doctors. I like Doctor Who. But in this one, it's not the same premise because it's still Mad Max, but they just have to change actors because of, you know, Mel Gibson's older and he wouldn't do it and all that. And I get that. That's fine. I'm not a pro I haven't got a problem with different actors playing the same character throughout different films. 
But I didn't think he did a very good job. That was all. His voice was too gravelly, um, and he was too tall, too bulky. He just didn't look like Max. And he didn't have enough personality. That was his biggest flaw. He had no personality whatsoever. Zero. Zip all. None. Nothing like the original Mad Max. Mad Max doesn't say a lot. I know that. Um, but at least in the first film, he's like, you know, he's pretty upfront. And I like the bit when he's like, you need a plan? Do you need help? You come to me. I got a plan. He's pretty upfront. He knows. You, you look at him, and, he, and in the third film, it's developed even further. He has morals. He has values. Yes, they're questioned from time to time, and they sometimes see so, but he has enough personality for you to go, yeah, that's Mad Max. That's a character on his own. He can stand on his own. This guy, Tom Hardy, playing as him, didn't really stand out at all as Mad Max. He just didn't stand out. He didn't have that Mad Max presence. Um, but that could have been George's fault, you know, the director's fault and the writing's fault. So I, I'll give Tom Hardy a second chance. If he chooses to do another one, I'll give him a second chance. He wasn't a bad, bad Mad Max. It's not like he did an awful job, but it's not enough for me to go, yeah, he's got Mad Max right. You know, it's... It, um, so, yeah, and like I said, I haven't got a problem with strong female characters. I'm not turning around saying, oh, female characters should be down to the stress. No, 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 not at all, not at all. But it's a Mad Max film, okay? Mad Max is the main character, and in the previous films, and in this one, it should have been as well, he is the guy who saves the day. That's just how it is. It's nothing to do with sexism. It's nothing to do with females being damsel in distress characters only. No, that's his character. That's the film. That's what he does. There's nothing wrong with that. You stick with it, because that's the focus of the film. That's the focus of the plot, and that's that. By all means, throw strong female characters in. In fact, even in the first two films, there were strong female characters in it. Okay, in the first film, you've got the grandmother with the shotgun who's trying to defend his miss, his missus and him uh, with the biker gang. The biker gang's just going straight up to her on the bikes, and she's just standing there shooting them down with the shotgun. She don't give a, a poop. She's just there going, yeah, take them on, take them on, boom. And then she gets knocked over, but she gets back home. She's like, go, 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 go save yourselves. Go save your kid, go save your wife. Go, go, go. I'll take them on, don't worry. This grandma's doing it. I mean, how much stronger female character personation do you need? The bloody grandma's doing it. And I'm like, yes, go grandma, go. And in the second film as well, the female characters have personality and they're strong. They're fighting with Max. They help Max with the tanker thing and everything. And in the third film, Tina Turner, bloody hell, how strong a female character could you get? Brilliant. <laughs> so don't give me the whole, oh, well, it's trying to... Make it. No, it was rubbish. It was rubbish. It was a rubbish, rubbish film. I didn't like it. It wasn't Mad Max. And even as an action film... It was average at best, really. It was. I lo again. I liked the lack of CGI. I loved the cars. I loved most of the camera work. I liked the the fact that it has elements of a Mad Max film in it. Yes, it does. But it's certainly the worst film of the lot. Okay, and I'm a diehard Mad Max fan. It is certainly the worst one of the bunch. Okay, I prefer Thunderdome over this one. So there you go. Anyway, I'm going to end my rant because I'm cooking chicken and I've probably burnt it to a cinder. Um, but I've got to go. And I know this rant has been on for too long and I've repeated myself and lost track of thought. But that's only because I just had to say it. I've just seen it and I'm like, no, this sucks. <laughs> I'm sorry, it sucks. I have no intention of seeing it again. I really have no intention of seeing it again. I don't care for it. Um, and I really don't understand why people think this is a critically acclaimed film. I'm not saying everybody likes it. No, there probably are some people who hate it. Um, but as a Mad Max fan who loves the first three films, I was really disappointed with it. I thought it was a terrible, terrible film. And I really hope that George Miller doesn't do another one. Or if he does, he goes back to the drawing board and says, right, OK, this was rubbish. <laughs> we need to do it again. But I think he should just leave it. I know he says he's got plans for a sequel. And it's tentatively titled Mad Max The Wasteland. But don't do it, George. Just drop it and leave it. I, I know, I know. I'm one of a million people. Well, I'm one against a million or billion other people who love it. So I know if the, if your fans like it or if the other Mad Max people like it, then by all means make another one. But me personally, I probably won't go and watch it. At least not in the cinema anyway. So there you go. On the plus side, though, before I, actually no, before I close off, on the plus side, I have seen trailer for the Mad Max game that's coming out on the PS4 and the Xbox One and the PC. That looks awesome. That really does look awesome. Only the other day, me and my dad were talking about how we could create a Mad Max game. We really were, just by coincidence. And I had heard about this game, and I saw some demo footage of it, or at least some a gameplay trailer footage of it or something like a couple of years ago or last year or whatever it was and it looked awful i looked at it and thought oh god this is just gonna be a really poor movie spin-off game oh jesus christ i oh, forget about it but i just saw now i just remembered it thinking oh yeah they were making a mad max game weren't they i wonder what it's all about i've just seen the e3 demo footage video clip of it 
It looks amazing. It looks like how Mad Max should be. It's got him dressed in his traditional outfit. Uh, it's got the Wasteland. It's like a free roaming game. There's like different areas you can go and explore that are based on the films, plus the Wasteland itself. Uh, it's a third-person vehicular game. It's 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 a, it's a vehicle combat game, but you've got elements of you going on foot and shooting things in third person. You've got the shotgun. You can do fisty punchy stuff uh, that looks similar to Batman Arkham style. But I'm fine with that. Even though it's simpl- simplistic, I like it. It's satisfying, so that's fine. Um, and the whole idea of the game is he's lost his interceptor and he wants to go get it back, but you've got to go and make a new car called your Magnum Opus. So in the end, you'll make a car that's better than your interceptor. I like that idea. That's great. I really hope you can get the interceptor back and you can have the interceptor because if you can, that would make that game a class full stop and end of story. I don't think the developers are saying you can, but I hope so. And if you have to get DLC for it, as long as the DLC is free for it, or oh, it's like a, a limited edition thing maybe, but I hope you can have the Interceptor, and it should be in the main game. If it's not, I'll be a little bit upset. But if you can get access to the Interceptor as choice, so you can say, look, you can build up your car and have this amazing car, but if you want the Interceptor, you've got it as well. If they give you that choice, I will love it. Graphically, it looks good. You know, it looks just like what the Mad Max films used to look like. The character looks good. He looks like the Mel Gibson one a bit. Um, and, uh, yeah, the trailer, the gameplay footage I saw of it, it looks fine. Nothing special. It's not original or anything, but it looks like what Mad Max should be. Um, and I'm like, yes, that's brilliant. And the fact that the developers have said, well, it's not really tied to Fury Road, it's think of it as before fury road i'm like great it's fantastic i just saw fury road it was rubbish i'd love for you to base it on the original films brilliant well done and that's kind of what they've done and uh the attention to detail of the world looks really good so far i'm really hoping it holds out they didn't show much of the places you can go and visit other than a little bit of the main place called gas town i think um but from what i saw it's got the desert it's got the wastelands the the desert wasteland same thing uh the colors look good when you're driving in the sand all the graphics of the car through the sand look good the combat looked fun uh there was some cars being blown up and it had all the sort of effects where the, you know the pieces will come flying off it a bit like in the films you know and the camera shots the camera of the game looks good it's a good camera angle where you've got like long distance shots of the cars and you can see everything go around you explode again nothing original but you can see things happening like all over i'm like yes that looks great so i'm really really hoping that the game is good because if it is i will be a happy bunny yes i know it's a vehicular combat game not a proper third person adventure game but it's got enough adventure in it to look good i was big thumbs up i'm like please 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 let this be as good as the trailer looks don't let it be fury road so you know Check out the game anyway, even if you like Fury Road. I'm not saying if you hate Fury Road, you're going to love the game. Of course not. I'm sure you'll love the game even if you like Fury Road. Um, But I have to be honest, the people who have criticised the game by saying, oh, it's not related to Fury Road, I stick two fingers up at you people. I really do. (laughs) The further away it is from Fury Road, the better. So there you go. Right, anyway, my chick is probably burnt to a cinder now, like I said, so I'm going to go. But anyway, thank you very much for listening to this ramble, if you have done. Um, please take it easy. Have a good one. Let your know, Let me know in your comments section below. What do you think of Fury Road? Did you like it? Why did you like it? What was good about it that you liked about it? Are you a fan of the first three films? What bits of this film did you like over the three films? You know, well, what bits did you like of this film that reminded you of the first two films, like everybody else seems to be talking about? Tell me. Let me know in the comments, because I don't mind being wrong. I don't mind people arguing with me or saying I'm wrong or hating me for it. That's fine. Just just be passionate about it like I am. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, yeah, leave them. And like I said, thank you very much for watching. I'll get a couple of videos up tonight, hopefully, or tomorrow night or whatever. Uh, and until then, take it easy. Have a good one. And uh, please watch the first three Mad Max films and enjoy them. Just do it. And then forget about Fury Road. Don't ever watch that film again. If you really like Fury Road, good for you. I hope you continue to like it. But I'm just hoping the game's good. I'm moving on to the game now. And let's hope the game's good. Bye. Anyway, bye. See you guys. Have a good one.